Hi everyone, welcome to another teacher training video from Pentecostal Publishing House. So excited today to have with me my friend Angie Clark. She's the coordinator of the Next Steps program for the UPCI. She's written a number of books about prayer, particularly about kids' prayer. And I wanted to have a conversation today about praying with our children. That probably is something we don't have to go into a ton of detail about why that's important, but just for the sake of having us all on the same page, don't want to assume it's a given. Um, I believe in the importance of teaching our our children to pray. I know everybody does on some level, but maybe just start us down this road of the conversation with why do we need to start with our children in teaching prayer and teaching people how to pray? Thank you so much. It's great to be here with yeah. you. It's my first time to do this, so I'm really looking forward to it. Um, just to jump in and answer your question, like why should we be teaching our children to pray? I would probably step one back from that and just say we really need to be training our children to pray. And that training can happen in a classroom, but it really needs to be happening at home too, because that's where we get a lot of our training, because there's a difference between teaching and training. So if you think about it, how we do training is, is very different. Um, I'll just start there. I have a story of my nephew. He was about eight years old. He knew how to brush his teeth just fine. He'd been brushing his teeth for years, but we went to Disney and he was ready to be out the door in a second. And my brother called him in, hey bud, did you did you brush your teeth this morning? And he's like, uh, yeah. And then <laughs> my brother could see that the toothbrush was a little dry. And so he said, come on in here, bud, let's do this. And so he actually helped him put toothpaste on the toothbrush and he stood over him. And as they were thinking about going to Disney, there he was training his son, like, no, you have to do this even when you're excited about something else. So. That to me kind of embodied what the idea of training is. And that's kind of how spiritual formation starts to happen in our kids is when we are doing it with them, we come alongside them intentionally in an environment that's conducive for them to learn. So it's not just teaching and hitting it on a Sunday morning, but it's it's a training procedure of something that we do over and over and over again. So having said that, my motivation for um, teaching kids to pray was two-pronged. I wanted to learn how to pray. And the second thing was, um, I really feel that children are part of the body of Christ and they're underutilized. And children who've been filled with the Holy Spirit, they need something to do to contribute to the kingdom. And prayer is an incredible way. Think about it. If we're interceding for the world and we're praying, you know, for God to do things in our family and for people that have, you know, maybe gone through a disaster or something like this, Adding the voices of our children, it can multiply our prayers overnight because we're adding such a large army of people uh, that we usually think of as children, but they're just little people. And when they're filled with the Spirit, they have the same capacity um, to do the same spiritual things that we grownups do. And they can actually sometimes do it a little quicker than we can. They don't have as much baggage, but the reason why is because we want to involve them in the body of Christ. And from there, when we bring them to Jesus in that way, then He gets to touch them. He gets a hold of them. Is it a promise that, oh, if they start praying when they're kids, you know, they're going to grow up and they're just going to be strong in the Lord? No, it's not a promise. But you are helping them establish a relationship and get them into the presence of Jesus. And so that, I think that's a really good motivating place. Um, at least it was in our group when we started. Well, I, I love that. I, I don't think anybody out there is going to be shocked by the idea that we're not going to wait till an individual is suddenly, you know, some magic number 13, 18, 21, and then mm -hmm. think we just flip the switch. Okay, now they're a grown up disciple. Right. We know that doesn't happen. So, of course, we need to be training. I love that distinction, training them to pray right. and that idea of modeling is so good. Um, and I think that's important that it's, it's good for them. But that, I love that the bigger overall picture of the body have right. it active mm -hmm. disciples at every age level. Mm -hmm. Okay, one of the things I want to get to is I know with some of the churches you've helped here locally that I've, I've been connected to, you have helped teach that prayer is a two-way street. Mm -hmm. And we all say that, but sometimes we might be guilty of mm -hmm. doing a lot of talking. Um, and I've been so impressed with some of the things you've done to help make sure that, that prayer, we, we listen as well. So I don't know if you want to get into that now, sure. but I do want to hear a little bit about when, you, when you're talking about teaching, training about prayer, mm -hmm. what, what that looks like, what that target is. So in my experience, it was kind of a gradual progression of how my journey in this went. But at the end of the day, what I discovered is there's basically seven areas of prayer 
that if you involve children in those seven areas, it's like you can't exhaust the material. I mean, because there'll always be something else. The Holy Spirit will lead you to something new and it invigorates your life. And so then it comes out of you and you're working with your kids. Uh, one of those seven things has to do with hearing God's voice. And a lot of times we run in with a grocery list and we're like, Jesus, I need you to do this. And I need you to answer this, this, and this, and this. And there are some people, they just have a propensity to pray that way because that's their nature and that's fine. But if that's the only way that we experience our relationship with Jesus, then we're kind of shortchanged in that. And it's not its not a deep relationship. And so um, training our children to stop and listen for what Jesus would say and explaining to them that when uh, He speaks to us, it's from God's Spirit to our spirit. So it may not be using our ears, it'll be through our spiritual ears, we call it. And uh, God speaks to us with little pictures or images numbers, colors, some people even smell. Uh, he uses our natural senses and our mind and our spirit work together to convince our brain what we need to do next. Mm -hmm. um, but basically we explain that to kids in a way and we try to help them get into a practice of listening. We call it listening, hearing God's voice. And even for me, um, I served in Asia in a closed nation for five years. And as a way to keep my, my spiritual senses sharp, I would do the same practices I did with the kids in my Sunday school group. I would stand in front of my closet and I would say, Lord, uh, what, what should I wear today? Should I wear something that is red and stands out? Should I blend in? You know, should I wear this? Should I do that? What time should I leave the house to catch the taxi? You know, what what time am I? And I would do exactly what I felt the Holy Spirit leading me. It was just a way for me to keep myself in a continual training process. And man, I could tell you so many stories of how God has talked to people, even skeptics, wow. and how He has come through uh, time and time again. Do you have time for a quick story? Yeah, do it. Do okay, it. okay. So I was teaching, uh, doing this training about a year and a half or so ago in Beaumont, Texas. And I, they had the whole family come in for this listening to God's voice thing because their church wanted to know more about this. Like, how does this work? So there were parents and kids and they were all sitting around. And the instruction was, when I say go, the first thing that pops in your mind, because we've already prayed and asked God to speak to us, the first thing that pops in your mind, it's gonna contribute to a story that he's gonna be answering. Okay, so they had the instructions, they were ready to go. So when I said go, buddy, everybody just believed, closed their eyes, eyeballs opened in a second. The first thing they saw, they, by faith, they did what I asked them to do. A lot of it has to do with obedience. Like, can you follow instructions? That's important. So they started writing and when it was all finished, they shared. So this family over here, if I remember the details correctly, uh, one member of the family saw a couple of uh, uh, donuts on a platter. Another family member sitting in another area saw a big donut. And they were like, what does this mean? You know, they talked to me afterwards actually, and the Lord had given us an incredible word. Everybody was blown away at how everything came together. So afterwards, these two, this family came and said, we didn't, you know, we didn't feel comfortable sharing, like, you know, because we saw donuts and, you know, it was you know, donuts, you know, what are you gonna do with donuts? Well. By the time our conversation, it was a brief one, by the time it was finished, they were so encouraged because the donuts had to do with a missions trip they were gonna be taking. And they had been raising small amounts of money. That was the small donuts. But the dad in the family saw a big donut and he said, now I know what the donut means. I just got, I don't remember if it was a raise or if he got a bonus at work. And he goes, I am to use that money wow. to put with the rest of the little monies yeah. and we're gonna take this trip. Oh, that's awesome. Well, in the process of that, his wife had seen flowers and it had to do with um, like the lilies of the valley, you know, like, don't be afraid, I take care of all the things. Well, the next night we prepared some hankies and we were drawing and writing encouragement words on them. And so when I got to one about the lilies of the field, I said, Lord, so I was rolling it up and folding it up. I'm like, why don't you let that family pick this one? Oh, yeah. And it's in a yeah. basket of 200, you yeah, know, these yeah. things. So I just like, shoved it right in the middle. I have no control over that. Yeah, right. Who's getting what? Do you know that Sunday night, I think Sunday afternoon, Sunday night, when that when they pulled that out, the mom got that thing. Wow. When she opened it up, not only was it what she said, but it was what we talked about. Yes. And so, buddy, she made a beeline to me afterwards. And during the service, I mean, they were just oh, going, yeah. just having that opportunity wow. to give Jesus a chance to speak to you. That's on a, you know, a first 
impression kind of a level. Yeah. But then that daily practice is where it's like second nature, first nature yeah. Um, of, yeah, I hear God's voice. Let me ask him, let me, mm-hmm. Jesus, what are you saying about this? That constant in contact is, is that's where we're going for. If we we're going to walk in the spirit, that's Absolutely. what that has to look like daily mm-hmm. walking. And, and of course, it, it, again, we've got to teach that as children, you, you, in the mm-hmm. same way you don't start off running, you learn to toddle, to crawl, to walk, to run. Exactly. Um, I, I think it makes sense that that metaphor would be connected. We're going to teach our children to hear the voice of God, to walk in the spirit. Mm-hmm. I love it. I love yeah. it. So good. So good. Okay. So I'm sure there are people out there right now that are listening. They, they love this. They love the story. They love that idea. Yeah. Prayer is conversational let's walk in the spirit okay let's say they teach the you know the the six to ten year olds in their sunday school class Mm -hmm. what are some practical ways they can start moving to implement this in their sunday school class well probably will depend a little bit on the curriculum and the values of the local church you need to stay in alignment with that absolutely um what we discovered the the first go with this is that prayer became such an interesting thing because of what you can bring into it that we built our lesson around the prayer time yeah so even though maybe i'm teaching on this topic i'm going to make prayer my focus and i'm going to i'm going to make sure that topic's pointing to that opportunity to pray that would be my my first thing because a lot of times we try to slam prayer in before we leave because we want to get to the craft and the snack and the fun stuff yeah but if prayer is the fun stuff yeah, if, yeah. if prayer becomes the fun thing that they're looking forward to and it's not going to happen overnight probably yeah. okay just just saying but if if that happens and then you're building now your whole class time around prayer well then you have time to do prayer yeah and prayer is not like jesus pray for my family it's not that and it's also not um just speaking in tongues session it's not that um prayer has to do with um intercession it has to do with all these different things that man you can take just about anything if you believe the bible is a lot about communication with God and you believe it's about reaching people and relationship, it's easy then to start folding everything into your prayer session yeah. that you're gonna have. That would be my that would be my thought. Oh, so good, so good. Well, I know there are people out there who are gonna be blessed by this video. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, hey, let's do it, y'all. Let's let's get our children involved in prayer. And and I, I will even stretch to say, if you're teaching youth or you're teaching adults, I'm sure you can glean from this session. Um, it's certainly important that we start with our children. I don't ever want us to to overlook that we can train our children to pray at young ages. But of course, whatever age level you're teaching, I love that. Let's make prayer a focal point, not just something we squeeze in because, oh yeah, we need to pray before we start teaching. So thank you for sharing. We really appreciate this conversation on prayer. God bless you and stay tuned for more training videos from Pentecostal Publishing House.